Hello and welcome to this beautiful Saturday morning. Trust me, I had a wonderful night rest. Right? You can see I'm all refreshed. <laughs> I hope you slept well like I did. My name is Anita Patrick and trust me, it's a beautiful Saturday because we're having this special live interview on medical tourism and so much to talk about medical tourism. Trust me, a lot of issues, a lot of concerns, a lot of things that have to do with the healthcare sector. Nigerians uh, want to find out what's the way out, out of all of this. How will the health sector get better? How will the, the medical tourism also help to give people sound health? Quite sad yesterday, I lost a friend to um, the issue of healthcare and it was quite touching because I was looking forward to seeing him back on his feet. But what can we do? We leave that to God. He knows better. Well, let's take away from that and bring you back home to Clevy TV Live Studio right now. Well, I have a guest. But before I introduce my guest, let's give you a breakdown of who my guest is. My guest is uh, Mr. Usman Isa. He's a renowned tourism and travel consultant based in Abuja, Nigeria. He's the founder and chief executive officer of Emblem Travels and Tours Limited. Well, let's tell you uh, what he does, what this um, Travels and Tour is all about. Well, Emblem Travels and Tours is a renowned travel agency uh, in Nigeria. They specialize in all tourism-related services and have been distinguished in the area of medical tourism. They've made a tremendous influence in the industry within a short period of time uh, due to their uniqueness and style of services they work around the clock trust me to bring innovations into the services of the healthcare and also uh, the industry uh, they also do a lot of um, hospitals ranking before they move you around they check all of the things that will ensure that the individual uh, is put in a very good medical care position and um, they also do packaging they package a lot of issues. Uh, they do paramedical and non-medical uh, staff in the in the additions to add to their packaging and coordinating effective visits and top medical experts from abroad for um, OPDs, CMEs, uh, and also master classes. Well, they are global. Uh, they are global because they render the most efficient and effective services to uh, their clients. So far, they have been packaging uh, clinicals. Uh, clinicians, rather, and personnel for international workshop conferences. All of this they do to ensure that the medical uh, tourism is given the best touch and Nigerians get the best of the medical care. But so let's get back to my guest. His erudite performance in the industry has singled him out among other travel agents in Nigeria. As an astute uh, businessman and expert in the field of travel and tourism industry, he has conducted a series of capacity building training for most travel agencies in Nigeria. This drive of his is to enable Nigerians to have access to quality healthcare while the government is making a conducive and quality healthcare service delivery. All in all, the vibrant young man deserves a standing ovation as Nigerian <laughs> tourism <laughs> expert. <laughs> Trust me. And his name is Usman Isa. It's good to have you in the studio, Mr. Usman. Yeah. Good Good morning, Miss Anete. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love the way you smiled. That that's, uh, because he deserves a standing one, ovation. Wonderful, wonderful introduction. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ah, I must confess. Interesting. All right. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. Okay. All yeah. right. Okay, it's good to have you, and it's good mm -hmm. that it's, it's a beautiful Saturday, and it gives us the atmosphere where a lot of Nigerians are, are relaxed at home. So I'm trust we're going to have an exciting time discussing all of these issues um, surrounding uh, medical tourism. But first things first, let's start with you as a person. I've given my own hype. <laughs> what can you tell us differently from yourself? You're doing medical tourism. Are you a medical doctor or are you a facilitator? Basically, let's just hear from you. Yeah, to start with, uh, my name is uh, Usman Issa. Mm. I'm uh, a medical tourism facilitator based in Abuja here. I'm the founder and CEO of Emblem Travels and Tours Limited. Yeah, I'm not a medical doctor, but I facilitate medical tourism. Okay. Yeah. All right, medical tourism, we've been talking basically uh, since I introduced the program. But let's ask you, uh, what is medical tourism since you're the facilitator of medical tourism? Yeah, um, medical tourism basically means traveling abroad in the quest for medical treatment or uh, traveling from home country to another country in order to obtain medical treatment in that country. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, yeah. so basically it's just a move. But l- like I mentioned earlier in my introduction, I talked about the fact that I lost a friend uh, to, uh, I felt he would have gotten a better uh, health care. In that kind of uh, atmosphere, um, how do you facilitate this tourism for people like that? Yeah, our commitment in Nebula Prams and Tours is to render best of services to humanity. And uh, when there is a case of medical tourism, what we always do, we always ask the patient whether he or she has been to any of local hospital. What I mean by local hospital, I mean Nigeria hospital. Mm. If yes, we'll, we'll ask, we we'll demand for the medical report given to the patient from the local hospital. Then if there's anything like, like, like scan document, like uh, I, I, there's a CT scan, MRI, then we we'll want to we'll see it. After seeing, we'll give the patient uh, patient inquiry form to fill. After filling the form, the doctor, the medical doctor in our means will go through the reports and uh, suggest uh, at least three best hospitals abroad. But before we suggest hospital, we'll ask the patient or the country he or she may be interested. But mostly we refer most of our patients to India because India hospital give quality treatment at affordable rate, while the rivals give uh, quality treatment at a very cost rate. Then after that, we'll send the medical report and uh, the form filled by the patient to hospital, at least like three hospitals abroad. They will go through it. After going through it, they will prepare their treatment plan Mm -hmm. and send to us. Treatment plan alongside with the doctor's profile. Then if we will not give the patient, if the patient wants to choose the doctor to handle his case or the hospital, we can also offer our own professional advice to select the best hospital and the affordable hospital for the patient. But if the person want to, patient wants to choose the the, the, the the one he or she like, he can choose. Then after choosing the hospital, if, for example, the cost of treatment is high and the patient wants us to get a lesser alternative for the patient, we can do. And after getting the lesser alternative, we can package all the document, take the, the patient to embassy and guide the patient throughout the processes. After the visa is ready, we, we in our office will sell flight ticket. We can help the patient to get affordable uh, fare. After getting the affordable fare, issuing the ticket, we send the ticket to our representative abroad. The representative will, will be preparing for the patient coming. On the day the patient will going to leave, we will connect the patient. Even before then, we can connect the patient with the hospital or with the doctor. They can be communicating before the patient travel. When the before the patient report of arrival, the our representative will be there waiting for the patient to receive the patient from the port of arrival to the hospital okay. and render the nursery services to him or her. Okay, it, it's it, it's it's a good breakdown you've just given us, but it's, it's said in several uh, reports from what we've got so far in Nigeria that it is um, Nigeria loses $1 billion annually to medical tourism. Does this have an impact to the Nigerian economy? Because... Recently, the, the the president of Nigeria had spoken about quality healthcare delivery, in which his administration is set to give to the people. But if Nigeria is spending one billion dollars <laughs> on medical tourism, what's your what's your thought? Does it come Yeah, well, to me, one thing first, and that is life. The reason I say so is not hard to know, because the, the economy is is made for the person not the person for the economy. So if a person is losing his or her life because we want to save money for the economy, then of what use is the economy? Of what use is the economy? But if we can save life, despite the huge amount of money that may be incurred in running the treatment, I believe it will be okay because look at the case of Musa Yaradua. People always talk about that as the president, Musa Yaradua, that's our former president Mm -hmm. that lost his life. So people were always saying that, ah, which Musa Yaradua is a, 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 alive, or how ah, which Musa Yaradua can spend like two or three years, that Nigeria would have changed for good. Okay. So to me, cost is not important when we are talking of life. Oh, really? Yes. I, I, I get a picture because, of course, you can't compare one's life to the, the money or the amount of money you put together. Mm-hmm. But I'm... You, you're promoting medical tourism because you see the need for one to have his life sound. It's when you're sound health-wise that you can talk about having the money to spend. But so far, what, the Nigerian system, from what we have in terms of the healthcare provisions, 
what would you say basically as a facilitator because you move around the world you know what it's like outside uh, the shores of nigeria what what is it like when uh, it comes to the medical provisions pardon the medical provisions, yes. Clearly. Medical provisions in Nigeria that we're looking forward to promoting medical tourism. Yes. So what, what's your thought on our own system here, basically? Yeah, if you look at uh, in Nigeria, we have a long way to go when it comes to medical tourism. Because what I say we have a long way to go is that there are many cases that we cannot handle in Nigeria. But when we are hearing the interview on radio, on paper, they will be saying that there's no all cases that we, Nigerians can hand, handle all cases, which is you and I know that is false. It's not true. Okay. What I'm saying is not true. There are some cases that we cannot handle in Nigeria. One of the cases is lung transplant. I don't think any hospital in Nigeria can handle lung transplant. We have uh, cases like uh, bumaro transplant. We have uh, liver transplant. We have heart transplant. I will have uh, uh, that is a neuro surgery and uh, spine related cases. All these cases mentioned cannot be handled in Nigeria. You know, I know very not far from there some times ago where um, I know like the hospital in Gariki, I, I think if I'm not mistaken, had uh, they were trying to encourage some medical doctors on surgeries and all of that. I know we have quite a number of Nigerian doctors outside the shores of Nigeria that are doing very well. If what's your thought? Basically, they're given the opportunity with good medical care in Nigeria. Do you see them coming back home? to add value to the Nigerian medical sector? Mm, for now, we did not see that enabling environment is not there because the working environment for medical personnel in Nigeria is very poor. That is why, as I'm talking to you presently, many of our medical doctors are relocated from Nigeria to countries like UK, US, Saudi, and uh, even India. There are times patients will travel abroad and they will, when they return, they will be telling us our, their experience, as in the, they will even say that they find Nigeria in the hospital there and they are doing very well, very great. And there are times that it's even Nigeria that will even Nigeria medical doctor that will handle their case over there. So now in this environment, we like the enabling environment. Even though we have the equipment, we don't have the maintenance culture. Okay. Now, if I want to, let me use a, an example for you. There is a, a, a bus is called the Aerofy, Aerofy, but I don't know if you have heard of that. Yeah. Probably not Aerofy. The commercial bus. Yeah, the commercial bus. Yeah, when you go to their park in along Barin Power Road, you see that. Uh, 75 or let's say 85 like maintenance culture okay so, so you say the maintenance culture, and that's one of the reasons that is hindering the progress of mental interview program we're having here and we're still looking at the medical terrorism and how this can um, impact the nigeria um, healthcare provisions given to citizens well you can join the conversation with our phone lines which will be rolling on the screen for you to uh, call in let's hear what you think let's hear your thoughts uh, the expert here the professor is here we want to share your experiences talk to him you can guide you on about that challenge which you were going through. It's still um, a live interview uh, on medical return. Yes, Mr. Isa. You mentioned some numbers, of, you mentioned a number of uh, cases of health challenges, which you think. But for the common man, <laughs> that uh, <laughs> he's struggling to get three score meal in a day and then he's down with uh, a terminal illness that he cannot do. Yeah, we are trying to partner with some HNG for now. Though the situation of the country, I don't think Zilli is sponsoring that for now. If not, there's some states that sponsor. But for now, I don't think that really so we are trying to partner with the uh, NGO that does that so that we can we can be introducing some of the well um it's I'll just show you a bit a bit or two. When we come back after this break, we'll give you more on the medical terrorism stay with us. One facility is working towards providing better healthcare for India. This 400-bed, state-of-the-art, multi-speciality hospital located in Gurgaon, India, is setting new standards in healthcare with use of modern technology, 
world-class patient care facilities and the best medical practitioners from across the world. Oh, this is Artemis Hospital. Designed as one of the most advanced in India, Artemis, through its 11 centers of excellence, has combined top-notch services in a warm, open-centric environment and affordability, making it one of the most sought-after healthcare destinations in India. With the hospital's motto, our speciality is you. Patient care is the core focus of the entire hospital staff. The patient is the biggest beneficiary in a tertiary care hospital. At Artemis, with all specialities under one roof, the patient has access to specialist doctors from the moment they enter the hospital. It takes a complete system of teams of doctors, nurses, and the best in tech to win against disease. Welcome back. We're still here. And it's still the live interview on medical tourism. And I still have my expert, who is a facilitator on medical tourism, Mr. Usman Isa, is still here with me. Like I told you earlier, that um, you can join the conversation with the phone lines there on the screen. Let's hear what you think. You just saw the clip there of how uh, patients are given the, the medical care. Uh, they're being guided through and they're brought back to life in sound health. I'm sure you want to get that part. And don't forget, he also mentioned the fact that their provisions and their partnerships to see how the common man, when I say common man, you I'm sure you understand what I mean. I mean, one that doesn't have the, the financial capacity to push for such care is being provided for this individual. But uh, Mr. Issa, let's get back to you. What I mentioned earlier, I was asking the kind of diseases which you mentioned, and I was trying to uh, talk about some uh, time in... I think it was one of the hospitals here in Nigeria where they're trying to see how some doctors came on their own to do some major surgeries, trying to see how they can contribute. But you also mentioned the fact that they're not enabling the environment. So what's your chat to the government, basically, even while we're promoting medical tourism on the Nigerian healthcare? Yeah, uh, government has its own side, and uh, Nigeria medical personnel also have their own uh, part. Like, if government can provide a new environment that can guarantee the safety of patients or that can guarantee the higher success rate. I believe people will start receiving treatment in Nigeria. But one thing I want to say, even though these go top government officials they travel abroad for treatment, yeah. as far well as they are as traveling abroad, to, uh, abroad for treatment, what is the hope of the government? So then they say, even within medical doctors, they know that the health system, the healthcare system in Nigeria is very, very poor. Even many of our medical our doctors travel abroad for Medicare. So what I advise in this case, government has to provide an environment environment because of a poor working environment. Many of our medical personnel has located abroad and they don't want to come back. But by the time they know that the system is running well, nobody will tell them before they come back because there's no place like home. Hmm. Okay, yes, because I, I was just going through uh, what I have here. It says, uh, I'm, I'm thinking, do you think medical tourism is precipitated by the lack of medical facilities in Nigerian hospitals or the lack of medical personnel? So which of them is the issue? Is it the lack of personnel? <laughs> Both are <laughs> contributing factors. So I, I'm turning that to you. What, what's yeah. the major uh, issue there? Yeah, for us to even, what are the, the main reason why people travel abroad for Medicare is uh, one, success rate before even the cost of treatment. Because there are some people that even prefer to receive treatment if they can get the quality treatment at a very high rate. Like some people, when they come to my office, I advise them that they should go to India to, to receive uh, treatment. They'll be saying those big men, as in where to do, what I mean by big men, where to do people, mm -hmm. they will come, I will suggest to India for them. Some will say that they will prefer Germany or they will prefer UK or US. And this country I mentioned, the, the cost of treatment is higher compared to India. 
why many people travel to India for treatment is that it's not that India is the only medical tourist destination around uh, that is, uh, uh, around the world. The other top ranking medical destination, but mm. it's because of their quality treatment and the affordable cost of treatment. That is why many people of travel course. to India for treatment today. So most of our patients will refer them to India because mm. their cost of treatment is cheaper and they have patient they are they are good in patient management and their their, their, their success rate is very high. Okay. Yes. Success stories so yeah, much because rates. I know so, I know I know a lot of people come back with testimonies. So far for you, mm -hmm. uh, wh what's let me use the word testimonies because I mean when I mean testimonies I mean success stories. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like you mentioned, so far for your clients that have come and have traveled with your agency, what has it been like for? Because I know you mentioned part of our, I was introducing you part of your focus or mission is um success story which is uh, and then you do so trainings yes. as well how do you train do you train facilitators like you to also help in pushing for this um, vision you have yes i train facilitators and i even train people uh about traveling business business generally like i train them about ticketing i set up travel agency for people i organize seminars uh they'll educate people you know nigeria now what is happening there are a lot of youths that are jobless that mm. don't have anything to do i encourage them to join us in this industry and uh, at times i even call some of the people that are close to me to train them free of charge without collecting a dial from them because this business is a very lucrative one what i say is very lucrative one is doesn't involve stress it's stress-free you can stay in your house lying on your bed making cool money while you are assisting people mm. Yes. I like that part where you mentioned the cool money. <laughs> Trust me, everyone wants to make cool money, even at the cool time. money. Why are you well, lying? Yeah. Or if you are looking for some additional, additional additional source of income. Mm. You can join us in the industry. You are free. Are you sure I won't join this? Yes, business? you want to join. <laughs> you are free to join. So we can find a way of finding balance around all of this. But aside the, you facilitating, um, how do you create awareness? Awareness in terms of, because I know some issues raised by some people is the fact that what we consume is also a challenge. Yeah, it's true. It's true. So what's your, your advocacy and awareness or uh, campaign like for people yeah. to know yeah. what to yeah. avoid? 99% of uh, health challenge we are having today is what we consume, what we eat in Nigeria. And at times we cannot blame some people because... Uh, uh, poverty is the very bad thing. Um, but some people fail to know that even though you are suffering, there are some little, little foods that you can afford. But some of these people, they look they look up to the big people. Maybe if they are in Mr. Big or they are in Tantalizer, all, all the, these big, big places all those, um... eating rubbish. Be eating rubbish. The poor person will pass out. Ah, see big people, see what they are enjoying. Mm. Not knowing that the local food you are eating in your house, you are eating a good food. For so, example, local rice. Mm. You know, have you ever cooked local rice and leave it the next day? And cook foreign mm -hmm. rice and leave it the next day and see what you see? So have you ever done that? So basically you're saying the, uh, the eateries, so, one needs to be careful what yes, you eat at the yes, eateries. Yes, because I was been to one eatery the other time, they gave me chicken. The chicken is even smelling, they put it in the oven and gave me when I pass it, the other, I have to pay them and leave. So, so. but some big people will be busy consuming the food. To which I, is harmful mm, to their health. Mm. So that's what I'm saying. How, in, in, since you know this, how do you tell people? How do you, part of your trainings that you do? How do you get to the grassroots for people to understand uh, that this? As I we wanting to help you travel, as I wanting to help you get good health, there are certain things you also need to look out for yourself as an individual. So how how do you go about your advocacy? What are your strategies? Yeah, what we are trying to do presently now, we are trying to partner with uh, an NGO that's into food safety so that they can educate people on what they consume. Okay. Yeah. And um, presently, one of, the, one of the NGO has approached me and okay. uh, we are trying to see how we can go into agreement and uh, support ourselves to enlighten people about what they, what okay. they consume. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so far, you mentioned a number of countries in which you, you facilitate for like the India and all that. So what's, how, how did you even get to flow with them in terms of <laughs> the partnership? Because I know it's not quite easy to just um, have that, uh, <laughs> have that uh, balance to mm. be able to advocate and facilitate people uh, outside the country. How, let, let's hear that side of the story from yeah, you. Yeah, uh, our company is tied with all the top ranking hospitals, all the top ranking hospitals in India, Egypt, UK, 
Thailand, mm -hmm. Singapore, Mexico, Turkey, Ukraine, and host of others. Okay. Yeah. Mm. And uh, we have a good rapport with mostly their MD and CMD of most of these top ranking hospitals. Okay. As we are in India, all the top ranking hospitals in India are, have a good rapport with their MD and CMD of the hospitals. Mm. And uh, no staff of the hospital can play with any of my patients when I refer patients because since they know that I know their mm. MD and CMD, they take everything very good care of them because. Once they know that there's anything go wrong and I report them to their boost, they will be in trouble. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So basically it has to do with personal relationship and collaborations in which you have with these hospitals yes. for your uh, your uh, patient to get the best of the care. Yeah. Um, okay, basically let's look at um, uh, more categories of Nigerians are habitually involved in medical tourism because that's it. There should be a certain... So that we've, got, we've talked about food, we've talked about costs, yes. but which which part or what part, or what kind of um, Nigerians tend to be involved or habitually have to travel, basically? You mentioned the number of uh, the well-to-do Nigerians that travel <laughs> just to get the best of the healthcare because they know what we have uh, in the country is not good enough for them. Yes, our founding so far, that 75% of people that travel abroad for medical treatment are not an aunt people from the north part of Nigeria, then the 30% spread all over the country. Mm. Mm. So people that travel mostly abroad for treatment are not on a, a house us. Let me use house us. So, uh, uh, known as house us. I, I, I don't think, I, I stand to be corrected, but I don't think the, the northerners are all houses. Is that what you tell me? No, 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 no. Well, popularly. <laughs> I want to say the, like now I'm from Kogi. Mm. Kogi is east. Hmm. We are not Nathanael. I'm just but some people will be saying that we are we are from the north. At times they will speak Hausa to me, and I will tell them, I don't understand Hausa. I say, how manage? You are from north, and you don't understand Hausa. Ah, and you just I'll, tell them, I'll be laughing. That, ah, is it everybody from north that even understand Hausa? What of those that do not grow up in, in, in Hausa? And in my own area, the area I grow up, there is no house. Even the Hausa people, they have their own area. We are not mingled. So... But I you know, don't understand how, sir. You know, one good thing I tell Nigerians is just to be a Nigerian all around. Uh, yes. Find a balance. The every language. Yeah. Uh, find a way of blending because that makes us unique as a country. Yeah, I even have something to say concerning mm. what you are saying. Mm. Yeah. Uh, when I'm about to register the company, I wanted to use, uh, I'm a Muslim. I wanted okay. to use the uh, Islamic name. Mm. Someone called me that I shouldn't use Islamic name because when I use, if I use Islamic name, some people will see that this company belongs to Muslim. Christians will say that this a company and they may not patronize me. And I say, okay, there's no problem. Me, as far as we are Nigerian, whether a Christian owns the company or Muslim owns mm. the company, we are one. So, so that, we can patronize each other. That brings the idea to the oneness uh, as a nation, emblem. the unity. Yes, this emblem that for, I'm using now. For Nigerians yes. to stand out as one. But let's yes. look at some, basically, let's move away from that. What step would advise the government to discharge, uh, to discourage, rather, medical tourism as to domesticate treatment of ailments locally? Because that should be one of our priorities. Yes, we, should, we, 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 are, we, are, we are a developing nation. Because if we can domesticate uh, medical tourism in Nigeria, I'll be happy for that. What makes me to be happy is that we can be referring patients locally, mm -hmm. but government has to provide an even environment that will that will do what? That will guarantee the higher success rates. And that will guarantee patients that when they receive treatment in Nigeria here, everything will go well with them. And we also have to discourage the top the top government officials mm. that are traveling abroad for treatment. By the time the top government official stop traveling abroad for treatment, everything will take shape. Mm. You know, I have a piece here. I'll just go through it so you hear with me. Uh, some time ago, uh, the President Mahmoud noted that he will direct the Ministry of Health and all related agencies to review uh, the submission of the reports uh, that has to do with medical uh, health care and ensure its integration into government's um, ongoing policies and programs. Because in the meanwhile, he's saying that the federal government has given reasons why medical tourism um, is on the increase in Nigeria. Medical tourism has not increased in Nigeria. Just like you said, domesticating that it, it in Nigeria will go a long way. It will be the best because at times if you even travel to some of this country, what you eat there, at times you see their food you cannot be able to consume. 
then maybe their own behaviors and their their environment there you may not you may not even you may not like it but now we don't have the options where well, we don't have the option is that we don't have what the patients are really looking for oh, really? in nigeria and one of it is the cost of treatment like i always tell people that cost also contributes to it because what i'm saying that cost also contributed to it is that mm. if the there is quality treatment and there is, you don't have money to afford you cannot afford the payment how will you go about it then two things go together the the treatment has to be quality then the cost of treatment has to be very reasonable. Okay. All right, cost of treatment has very reasonable. There, there's yeah. something else there. Just um, November 20th, that's on Friday. Just yesterday, uh, the president says um, the federal government is committed to achieving universal health coverage aspirations by 2030. Let's wait to see. And if that can come into, <laughs> I'll be very happy because most of these things will be saying it, will be seeing it in paper. And one funny thing about Nigeria, there are times, because Nigeria is full of scammers, especially our top government officials. Okay, so there are times they it. will bring medical equipment to some hospitals. Before you know them, too, will also, they will, res they will resell. Mm. They, before you know, you will not see the equipment again. And at times, even the, the personnel also contributed to it, because since it's not their own, they may not take good mm -hmm. care of it. Okay. The equipment. So basically, you know, earlier you talked about medical tourism, which is uh, medical maintenance culture. Mm -hmm. uh, that is just not just in the medical field that, uh, as well. It also goes yes, beyond the medical beyond, field. So yeah. there's a lot of things that, that I, the, from what you're saying, you're suggesting the government needs to also consider, which is one enabling environment, yes. uh, the maintenance culture to yeah. say. But like I always tell people that the government I have, have something to say concerning the enabling. Okay, environment. let me allow you before I, before I yes, tell more. I have something to say concerning okay. it because we, are, we have been saying enable the environment, enable the environment. Some laymen, they may not even know okay. what this enable the environment is all about. What I mean by enable the environment, if government can provide a, an environment that will guarantee, you understand, the patient mm. uh, receiving treatment in Nigeria that everything will be okay, mm. then if uh, they, there will be an increment in, um, in salary or motivation for the health workers, if there will be a training and retraining program for for the medical personnel, if, uh, okay, these reasons are even enough. Because when I talk about the equipments, yeah. it's one of the contributing factors. Mm -hmm. The facilities, they are not here. If you go to some, all these uh, government-owned hospitals, if you see their equipment, they are, most of them are outdated. You see their medical, you see their facilities, most of them are outdated. You see furniture, oh. everything very tattered everywhere, look dirty, mosquito everywhere, mm -hmm. no nets. So this is yeah, man, so we cannot. That's so, the little I can say. Basically, on yes. okay, like I mentioned earlier, I said um, the 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 provisions of the enabling and the enabling environment for Nigerians, like uh, Isa mentioned, is quite um, important for Nigerians to get the best of the medical care. If um, the government is saying that or proposing that uh, the universal health care coverage uh, would aspiration rather will be, uh, they're looking forward to it by twenty thirty. A lot of people will be asking, 2030, this is 2019, which is almost rounding up already. You we're know, looking at 2020, that's less than, um, say, 10, 11 years. And then we, we hope that the health sector would be much better. But what can we do other than um, keep appealing and um, looking forward to the provisions uh, for Nigerians to get the best of medical health care. Just like Mr. Isa mentioned earlier, uh, it takes a sound mind, which is the human, <laughs> before you talk of cost. And um, obviously, it's like I tell people, it's when you're healthy that you have the means to push yourself out to go make ends meet for yourself. Health counts first. But like I said earlier, the phone lines are still there for you. Let's hear your thoughts. Let's hear what you think. And um, let's get this conversation uh, going with what we have. Uh, I still have Isa. And Isa, I'm coming back to you basically because um, you mentioned quite a number of countries and what they have. In these countries, what would you say was the motivating factor that made them prioritize health and ensure that the enabling environment is there for their people compared to what we have back home here in Nigeria? Yeah, if you look at, for example, let me use India. For example, to the, their population as yes, well. Yes, India is the second largest country. There are about 3 billion. After China, mm -hmm. the next is India. Mm -hmm. 
And if you look at an Indian man today, if they come to Nigeria, they are to pack money to Nigeria. If Nigerians are going to India, they are to go there and spend money. Their government is really putting money in the health sector because there is a program they used to organize every year, Title Advantage Health Healthcare. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was opportune to attend one, attended one 2017, okay. took place in Bangalore. And when I came there, I was surprised because India, every year in year out, they are sponsoring people from about 75 countries for the mm. event. Okay. And as they are sponsoring people, they give them special treatment. I have seen, I have witnessed, I have witnessed because uh, during that, the, the program, they lodge us in five star hotel. Mm. So now, over more than 75 countries are marketing for India alone. So because they know the system is running well, everything is running well. So people decided to market for India because of their working environment that is conducive. There is really a neighbor environment there, friendly for medical personnel. So there are even many of our Nigerian medical personnel, even doctors practicing there, as I'm talking to you presently. Mm. So that brings me to asking, how may, how would you assess the treatment, uh, the treatment of patients in the hospitals uh, abroad and those in the country back home in terms of the cost of the, med of the treatment itself? Because you just mentioned the environments they have. That's, this is what we have here. Yeah, the cost of treatment, uh, mostly like I use India as an example, is reasonable because uh, why the cost of treatment in, in India is reasonable is that they have everything there. They make, like India, they don't import anything. Even mm. most of the medical equipments are manufactured in India. Amazing. Yes, and they are paid low uh, a task okay. to the government. Okay. So these two things really, because if you look at what India are investing in medical tourism, you cannot believe. Because there are times we're trying to bring some consultants to Nigeria to do some surgery here. Mm. And some will now be asking, do they have, did the hospital in Nigeria have so-so equipment? Do they have this equipment? I will, I will say no. There's no time. I have to tell them, to, that I should tell them to come over because they can come here to do the surgery here. There's no problem. But the problem, the equipment is not in Nigeria for them to use. I'm talking of the medical equipment. Mm. It's not in Nigeria for them to use. So if not, at times we even like to be bringing consultant here to do some operation in Nigeria because of the cost of traveling. So as, apart from the cost, basically, you're saying the the whole um, environment, the whole uh, your assessment of them, basically, is what percentage and then the percentage? Yeah, the percentage. Like now, for example, let me use the case of kidney transplant in Nigeria and mm. that of India. Like in India, the kidney transplant, the minimum you can get there is uh, 12,000 USD. Right in Nigeria, it's, up, it's more than 15,000 USD. And this 12,000 years, even the cost of the cost of transportation, feeding, and accommodation is even inclusive. Okay. Yes. Okay. So while we're trying to wind up and our discussion, let's hear uh, what's your advice to um, Nigerians that that are stuck with the with the decision of whether to travel or not because of the financial challenge? Yeah, uh, health is greatest wealth. There's an adage that says that health is the greatest wealth. For mm -hmm. those that have means to travel, some may not know how to go about it. I advise them to use us because there are times some people know we are in computer age. So many people are learning, they go to, they are, sorry, many people are computer literate. They go online to charge for hospital or charge for doctors or charge for country to go. I advise people to use us. What I say, I advise people to use us. There are times Google may not give you what you want because they are fraudsters abroad. Even there are some fake, there are a lot of fake hospitals abroad. There are a lot of fake medical tourism facilities abroad. At times, some people will travel and they will come and be telling us their experience that they dupe them, they foreign them, they will be using all different kinds of languages. Mm. So since we are here, we can guarantee the safety of the patient mm. and we can we'll make sure the service will be rendered beyond expectation okay. to the patient. Okay, there you have it there from Mr. Osman Isa. He's giving you a breakdown of what you need uh, as one that need that basic health care delivery to be offered. You, whether you have the financing, you have the means, just find a way around to Emblem Travels and Tours uh, where they'll give you all of uh, all of the needed assistance you have, you need to get 
to help you get that quality help. Not forgetting their, their vision is providing qualitative and standard tourism-related uh, services to uh, their highly esteemed um, clients from all walks of life. It doesn't matter what part of life you belong to. They're going to bring all that. And they also bring in um, innovations innovations for positive impacts in the world uh, of tourism industry so don't forget that they have that's what they're looking for that's their vision and once one's vision is right trust me they are ready to run with it and they, they intend to carry you along in this vision it's been amazing um mr osman is having you on this special interview live interview <laughs> to ex, ex uh, bring out just expose the whole thing talk to people on the whole essence of medical tourism here in nigeria but once a very big thank you we hope to have you come back tell us more more testimony more success stories <laughs> thank you from... Mr. Aniti. i'm grateful i'm really really happy and uh i, I was even expecting call from nigerians mm. so nobody called <laughs> no we had a call we had, we had to well, it, i think the network has had some issues okay so it was, was okay, was breaking okay, so okay, okay no problem so i'm grateful uh, i really appreciate okay thank you very much I'm grateful. All right, he's grateful. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry about the network. Probably you couldn't mm. get through to us, but don't forget that you can always reach out at any time and we'll get it across to him. But he's, uh, I've given you the breakdown. So look out for Emblem Travels and Tours on the medical tourism to give you all the best medical treatment you need to get. Well, that's it on this live interview today. My name is Anita Patrick. Many thanks for joining us. Do have a lovely weekend ahead of you. People have a lot to contend with in the face of the fiercely competitive environment, escalating costs and racing deadlines, leading to unhealthy